Hey guys, I don't know if this is going to be a whole thought, but it's going to be some insight. I was looking at these commentaries on a couple of the verses in 1 John chapter 5, which I did the uh, run through of, where I just read through it and provide anything that, you know, that comes to mind that from my previous studies of it and just getting back into the word. Sometimes I don't always have stuff to say about it and I didn't you know, I probably had more confusion in this chapter than anything else. But uh, one of the things that kind of interested me that I wanted to look into again was the whole uh, witness or the testimony of the spirit, the water, and the blood. It's very interesting. And I knew that there was going to be different, a lot of different views. On our, there's a lot of people that agree on some things, too. And so the two verses that I'm mostly looking at are... You know, well, there's this section here, the testimony concerning the Son of God, which is 1 John chapter 5, verse 6 through 12. But I'm really looking at verse 6 and verse 8. Verse 6 says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. So he came not by water only, but by water and blood. What does that mean? It's kind of... Seems kind of strange, doesn't it? Like, there could be a lot of different ideas to that. So, and then 1 John 5, 8 says, And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And I looked at the different commentaries, and it seems that a lot of, a lot of people agree that the blood part is talking about the death of Jesus. Okay, that, you know, he died on the cross, um, and and I would like to do do a video and, and just kind of go over the different views maybe, but right now I just kind of want to tell you what I think that it means uh, and, and some of the, one of the better commentaries, I think, is Dr. Thomas Const Constable. Um, so here on 1 John 5, 8, first uh, I, wanted, I was looking at this first where it says... Uh, the witness of the, you know, there, there are these three witnesses in the earth of the spirit, the water, and the blood. And so he says, really, there are three witnesses to the earth, or to the truth. There are three witnesses to the truth. These witnesses are the Holy Spirit teaching through the apostles and prophets, and uh, which could include the scripture, you know, teaching through the, the, the prophets and the apostles. The writer, or the, sorry, the water of Jesus' baptism. So a lot of people think that the water represents the baptism, and there are other ideas for the water and the blood. But So I'm thinking that the water represents the baptism of Jesus, and the blood represents his death, his crucifixion. And I think in the video I might have said that I thought that the blood represented his humanity, that he was divine, and I'm just thinking of like the blood in his body, and I'm kind of taking it kind of literally. But uh, here it says in Dr. Thomas Constable's commentary that John personified later, or John personified the latter two in this verse. I'm kind of rushing. I just woke up, actually. I'm getting ready to go work for UPS in a couple hours. I'm drinking some coffee, but haven't even started that, actually. So, oh, anyway, John personified the later two in this verse. And I'm just going to take a drink of coffee. Maybe that's what I need. Okay, that was the first drink of coffee. That's awesome. So John personified the latter two in the verse. So he personified the water and the blood. So that the water represents baptism because it involves water. It's kind of obvious. And the crucifixion involved Jesus bleeding, dying. Okay. Uh, so the testimony of eyewitnesses and prophets, as well as that of the historical events, affirmed the divine and human character of Jesus Christ. So he's kind of appealing to the historical fact that Jesus was baptized and that Jesus was crucified, and that these are testimonies of who he was, Okay, that he was who he says he was, he existed, and he was God in the flesh. Um, let's see. Okay. 
So basically, he personified water and blood. Water to mean baptism, and blood to mean his death. And he's appealing to these as historical facts. And, and also, you know, the eyewitnesses of the prophets, and, you know, they wrote down the, the prophecies of this happening, and, and the apostles uh, confirmed that it did happen. And so, then let's go back and look at First John chapter 5, verse 6, and I wanted to see what he said about this. What does it mean that Jesus came by wa not by water only, but by blood? So we know that, you know, if the water's talking about baptism, the blood's talking about his death. You know, he came not by baptism only, but but also by blood. What does that mean? Or by death, what does that mean? Uh, well, it says here, some false teachers in the early church taught that uh, the divine Christ descending on the human Jesus uh, at his baptism, but left him before his crucifixion. So he was saying that, uh, they're saying that Jesus wasn't always God in the flesh. Okay. John referred to this teaching in this verse, and we can kind of ignore that anyways, whether whether that's kind of what he was uh, appealing to or not, either way. Uh, but Jesus Christ, one person, came at his first advent not just to experience baptism in water, but also to die. And so the true identity of Jesus, the writer appears to be saying, is only to be discovered by looking at the whole of his life, including its end, okay, and um, and then some other people say that, uh, you know, it's like John the Baptist was baptized and stuff, but he didn't die, you know, for our sins or whatever. I mean, he was he was put to death, but just kind of ignore that. I just, you know, I'll have to go over different views and stuff in the future. But it's so what what he's saying that John is saying in this is that, uh, you know, who Jesus is, it's, it's defined by his whole life, uh, you know, even up to his death, okay, so, uh, not just his baptism, but the fact that he died, uh, you know, and fulfilled the prophecy, and, uh, so he was God in the flesh the whole way through, and, uh, so that's that. Just something for you to think about. Like I said, it's I'm just sharing this with you as I've been looking over it the past few days, and I think that I was kind of ready to comment on this. And there's a lot more stuff that's interesting. First John chapter five, of course, the the sin unto death, and you know I can go ahead and mention that too. I guess that you know I, th I think that I forgot to mention this in the run through. is that it says, If any man sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life. And so people try to say that the sin unto death is like a physical death, like somebody commits some kind of sin that leads to their death, or, you know, they're punished with death or whatever, uh, physically. And I said that this has to be spiritual death, because that's what I've, I've learned from, from previous studies. For one, most of the time when it's talking about life and death in, in the first general epistle of John, it's talking about spiritual life and, and death. So, so there's that. But also, here it says in verse 16, if, if any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death. Okay, and so if we take that as physical death, he's saying he's not going to die. It says, he shall ask, and he shall give him life. Okay, so if he's not going to die, then why should we ask for him to have life? Okay, uh, because the life and the death, they either have to be both physical or both spiritual. You know, it can't be the other way. Uh, so that's something to think about as well. But the main focus of this was to talk about the water and the blood. So, thanks for watching. God bless.